ヤシカ。The Silence of Story。I guess the silence of story really meant a complete lack of communication from the company because we have not had any meaningful updates from the Yashika Kickstarter project since it concluded, despite having raised over a million dollars. This is pretty telling because the camera is supposed to ship next month. So, what's going on? Let's talk about it. Now, it's no secret that I've been pretty critical of this project in both the product being offered and the way the campaign is being run, so I'll try and stay as objective as possible. I want to discuss three things in this video. First, I want to talk about the updates, or lack thereof, since the conclusion of this project. Second, if you're a backer of this project, I want to discuss some options just in case you're getting worried about Yashika being able to fulfill its commitment to this project. And third, I want to discuss products that you can buy today that can actually emulate the film experience, much like this project was trying to do. But these are tried and true products that actually work,、uh, and you can buy them right now. Okay, so we have had some updates from the project. It seems that Yashika was not satisfied with the $1.3 million they raised on their Kickstarter campaign, so they went and started an Indiegogo campaign for even more money. Okay, I know I said I was going to be objective. Some updates we do have is that we have two new Digifilm cartridges. One is called In My Fancy, and the other one is called Blue. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any sample images from the camera of these new Digifilm cartridges. All of the sample images on the website are actually sort of mock ups or you know, representations of what the film might look like. We still don't have pictures from the camera. Since the conclusion of the project, we also have an upgraded lens and an upgraded sensor. I mean, it's still cell phone quality sensors, so don't expect too much. But again, if we have this final build, where is the final build prototype? According to their own timeline, they were supposed to have a prototype finished in December. Remember, the camera is supposed to ship next month. We still haven't heard anything about this. Let's just say I wouldn't be surprised if they never had a working prototype despite those shady videos they released on their Kickstarter campaign. Now, remember, not having a working prototype is a violation of Kickstarter terms of service. Also, it wouldn't surprise me if they still didn't have a working camera that's ready for mass production. We've seen no final prototype, sort of mock up or anything, and we still haven't seen images taken from the camera. Now, they say that they have images taken from the camera, but we're never released any EXIF data and we're not giving full resolution photos. Now, remember, they raised over 10 times their initial goal, so how are they going to ship all of these cameras? Have they accounted for the huge uptick in production that they need? All of this is tied in with some really shady business practices. I've had reports from people have actually, actually having their pledges refunded because remember, you can only comment on the Kickstarter campaign if you're a backer of the project. So remember that there was a little rewards tier for like two and a half dollars that was, Yashika would send you a postcard. Most of those people who were critical of the project in the comment section were actually refunded their money and kicked out of the project so they could no longer comment on it. Even when people who are positive about the project, including backers and super backers, make questions and comments in the comment section, Yashika responds with the same copy and pasted answer that they're working on it and that you should have faith in the project. But still, no major updates of any significance have been released. But hey, it's not like they promised to keep us updated every step of the way. So, this brings me to my second point is what can we do about it? Now, unfortunately, the answer to that question is not much. It's probably too late to you know, charge back your credit card or dispute the charge and get your money back through either your credit card or PayPal or however you back this project. Now, given sort of the terms of service of Kickstarter, there are legal ramifications if Yashika is unable to fulfill its promises because you are entering into a contract with that company. For the reward that you signed up for. If they are unable to deliver that reward, there are legal channels that you can go through. However, that's going to take a lot of time and it's, you know, it's questionable whether or not you're going to get all of your money back. Ultimately, I think they're going to deliver something. I think it's going to be massively delayed and I think it's not going to live up to the hype that the, sort of the project sort of instilled in people, you know, playing on those senses of nostalgia and the sort of the film experience. You know, at the end of the day, this is a cell phone sized sensor, or even smaller, in a camera with a you know, small glass lens. It's a toy. It's made out of plastic. It's going to take pretty crappy pictures. This brings me to my third point. 
in the sense that if you want to emulate the film experiences, there are plenty of other options on the market right now. First off, any modern cell phone will take probably as good, if not better quality pictures than the Yashico Y35. All you have to do is slap some Instagram filters on there or some Visco filters, and there you go, you have that film look. Now I know what you're saying, you know, the whole idea is that you, you don't see the pictures right away, it's a more tactile experience of actually pressing a shutter button and winding the film to advance to the next frame so you can take another picture. I understand that, but if you're gonna go through all of that trouble to emulate the film experience, why not just shoot film? For example, this is the Holga. It is a plastic toy camera, just much like the Yashica Y35. It takes 120 format film, and this camera and the first roll of film can be had for $40 on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description down below. And this is a great way to get into film if you've never done it, because this is a very simple camera. It really literally has two settings, you know, for aperture. It has a little bit of focus control, not much. It's got a shutter button. And honestly, you know, you, you wind it by hand. It gives you all of the tactile experience, not having to worry about exposure, not having to worry about all of the technical side of film. You shoot a roll of 120 film, 12 shots on a roll, and, uh, or 16 if you go the 645 format. And it's a lot of fun. And just like Yashica says, expect the unexpected, this is the original expect the unexpected camera because the lens isn't high quality and you kind of, you don't know what you're gonna get. And it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of happy accidents that have happened with this camera. Now I know that film development costs can be expensive and prohibitive because a lot of people maybe don't have access to the lab or their own development, you know, tools and chemicals. But remember that the sort of average price point for the Yashica Y35 was about $200. So that, you know, if you spend $40 on this and a roll of film, that leaves plenty of room for more rolls of film development and scanning costs. But if you don't want to shoot film and you kind of want to have that sort of Lomo-ish look, they actually, uh, Holga actually sells just the lens of this camera. You know, it's an F8 lens, plastic, you know, full of chromatic aberration, all kinds of nonsense. Um, but you get those unexpected results, something a little bit different outside the norm. They sell them in all kinds of different mounts uh, for Canon and Nikon. So if you have a DSLR, you can use this sort of inferior quality lens to get some unique results. Now, if you really want to shoot film, you know, probably the easiest format is 35 millimeter, and you can get something like this. This is a Canon AE-1 program, probably the best beginning camera. Um, and, you know, this camera has so many features and it's really a good step into the film world, and it's a camera that can last you a long time. It can get a lot of things done. And depending on quality, you can find cameras like this anywhere from about $50 US to $150 US, and there are different models and different things. But the AE-1 program has the full auto mode, so you know it's really easy for beginners to get into while you're still learning the fundamentals of photography. And you know if you wanna shoot film, you know, this is the way to go. There's also, of course, one of my favorites, which is the instant sort of film world. So if you shoot Instax with Fuji or even the new Polaroid One Step 2 and the new Polaroid film, that's another great way to get into the sort of the film market, the instant film market. And, you know, when I talk about unexpected results, you know, they're, you know, especially with the Polaroid films, you know, they're not as predictable as the Instax film. And some people don't like that, but I think that's part of the allure is you really don't know what you're going to get. They have longer development times and, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of up in the air. Um, but when you get that shot that you're really happy with, I think you're, you're much more you know, enthusiastic about it. At the end of the day, there's a lot of products out there currently that are actually designed to emulate the sort of film experience or give you a sort of segue or you know, get your toes wet with the film experience. And the best part is they're available now. But I wanna hear what you guys think. If you're a backer of this project, are you a little bit worried or are you still have faith in the project? And if you'd like to know more about real film photography, leave your comments down below about what you'd like to learn, where I should start off. I'm gonna probably do some videos about the introduction of film, different types of cameras you can use. That's gonna be one of the next units coming up. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you get that notification when those videos come out. Whatever you decide to go out and photograph with, remember, have fun and make prints of your photographs. So until next time, happy photographing.